All right, let's, let's get started. Welcome everyone to this Business Finland webinar on smart mobility. Uh, this is our second session uh, on the smart mobility series following the live stream we did yesterday with the topic of why Finland is a top location for automotive R&D, even though we don't have any uh, consumer brands of family car manufacturers there. And the, uh, the premise is that, that uh, there is, instead of those large uh, well-known OEMs, it is a tight concentration of software, hardware, and user experience know-how that's currently serving the international legacy industries and automotive being one of the most prominent one. Today, uh, we're discussing one of the fantastic examples of the type of quick and agile projects that you can do with a multidisciplinary, multifaceted team that is so typical to the Finnish R&D scene. Before we uh, get there, let me review the house rules for the webinar today. During the presentation, you will be able to type in questions in the Q&A field or on your GoToWebinar panel. You can choose to be anonymous or you can leave your name and the company. At the end of the presentations, all of them, I will read your questions to the speaker and speakers and hopefully we'll get a good like a panel discussion and conversation going. I will not be reading your name and the company. That will remain with us in case you'd like us to contact you for further information. Uh, the session is recorded and a video will be made available. All right, without further ado, let's get down to today's agenda. We have a total of five speakers today. They each played a different but critical role in designing and creating the Origo steering wheel. Uh, we're going to start with, um, thank you. We're going to start with uh, Professor Rob Raisano from Tampere University. He is the head of Tampere unit for computer human interaction faculty of information technology and communication sciences. So he's going to lay out the umbrella of uh, how Tampere University made this um, concept project possible. Now, following Professor Raisa, we're going to hear from three businesses that actually were the ones creating the concept. Uh, we're going to start with Ms. Mari Makkonen. Uh, she will do an introduction to the 3D touch. Um, uh, she's the marketing director of Canatu, which is the material science company uh, with the carbon nanobot sensors that were used. Then uh, we can, uh, after Robe, we'll hear from Hase Sinivara. He is the senior technologist responsible for design innovations at Tactotech Tech Group. And Tactotech is the company behind the injection molded structural electronics. <laughs> Patrick, can I disturb you for a quick second? Uh, we have a question. Some somebody's saying they can't hear you, so I just want to make sure that everyone else can hear you. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you. Right. Okay. Um, Nicole, are you there? Can you type in if you can hear us? Anyone else? Okay, maybe um, Harlan, if you reset your browser. Um, all right, where was I? So I, I introduced Hase Sinivara uh, from Tactotech. Tech, Tactotech is the injection molded structural electronics company. And then the third, third business. Okay, let me see. Yeah, Nicole, you can hear us well. Okay, very good. So, um, yeah, Harlan, if you want to just reboot your system. All right. Uh, Tacto Tech, the injection mold is structural electronics company, and then he will talk about the user interface. Uh, Hase will be followed by Mr. Timo Posio. He is a business development manager from Sealy Auto, and that, that is the user experience on top of the UI. And after the three businesses, we're going to wrap up with Dr. Ahmed Farouk. He is a postdoctoral researcher and a visiting postdoctoral fellow at Purdue University. Uh, and, and he will um, kind of summarize the industrial university collaboration. All right, now 
uh, Professor Raisa, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, share your video and, and your screen. And I'm just gonna take out my. I'm waiting for the share. All right. Okay. You got it? Should be now visible. So, yes. um, hello. Uh, as um, Petra said, my name is Robert Isomo. I'm from Tampere University and I'm heading uh, Taukai Research Center, which is the largest academic research center in Finland in the field of human technology interaction. Um, Tampere University um, is the second largest university in Finland. And uh, in addition to world-class research, it is a well-known of active industrial collaboration, where it ranks as number one in Finland. Uh, now, some uh, details about the project that is today uh, presented to you. Um, uh, first, uh, I want to say that it's a co-innovation project, as you see in the heading. And uh, this is a typical university industry collaboration instrument in Finland. It means that, that there is close collaboration and co-creation uh, as an integral part of the project. And the results of the university will be public and published in academic venues, but uh, companies uh, will keep their results uh, that they are producing. Uh, the project is called Multimodal uh, In-Vehicle Interaction and Intelligent Information Presentation, or MIVI. In addition to the university, we have 11 companies collaborating in this project uh, that runs until summer 2021. Uh, it is a major research program funded by Business Finland with a total budget of 8.5 million euros and uh, including public R&D funding of uh, 3.78 million euros. Uh, in addition, um, th this project is collaborating with uh, three U.S. Uh, universities, including US, UCSB, Purdue University and Bente University. And we have actually already implemented two research exchange visits uh, for longer periods uh, with two of these universities. But unfortunately, the current uh, COVID-19 situation will likely cancel the rest of these visits in this project. Um, about the ecosystem that we have in this project, uh, uh, in the center of the figure, you see here companies that are funded by Business Finland and University, of course. And in the next layer, we have our partners from the project that are providing in-kind contributions, uh, something like uh, windows or data or systems that we can use in the research. Um, then in the next layer, we have some other Finnish companies that are uh, related to this field and potential partners. And in the outer layer, there are international companies that are very often clients for our partners. Then uh, briefly about uh, the content and what is the motivation for this project. Uh, there is increasing traffic and complexity in car systems. And uh, this may lead to safety issues and, of course, many other usability problems. Uh, for example, the driver should not look off the road for too long when using touchscreens or other car displays. Uh, environmental noises may render audio less useful. And there is always some vibration and forces involved when driving with the car. And this affects the uh, sense of touch and any haptic feedback that might be used. Uh, our solution uh, is to study multimodal in-vehicle interaction that is making use of uh, different human senses and natural ways of human action. And these latter ones include things like speech, gaze, gestures and touch and that kind of uh, human actions. Uh, then about the other part of the project, um, intelligent information presentation. Uh, Currently, there is really plenty of data coming from car systems. And of course, there is many kind of sensor data related to traffic and any other kind of data that is used in the car, like uh, internet or, or any, any other service that you want to use during driving. Also, uh, connection to other, other people. And um, 
we have this uh, low level data and then we are using uh, artificial intelligence methods to understand uh, this data better to uh, make it higher level presentation and then we adaptively uh, present this uh, car information and external information to the driver and passengers based on what they need and what is recommended for them at a given uh, situation and use of these interaction modalities is adapted to the driver and context and uh, we can accommodate abilities and preferences of the people uh, driving uh, like if somebody has lower vision or something else uh, some other problem with the sensi senses we can uh, compensate that with some other modality that is useful for that person of course the driver should be seeing quite well but the passengers may have some other situations uh, then i keep my introduction very short so next you will hear about the high profile result uh, that is presented by several companies and one of our researchers and uh, I just leave it here for Mari to continue. Thank you, Professor Raislamo. All right, Mari, I will make you the presenter so you can start sharing your slide. Excellent, thanks. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on, you're muted. Oh, can you unmute yourself? I can't unmute you. Okay, I think. Yes, now. Okay. So hello everyone. Um, before we start with Oracle, I would like to say a few words about Kanatu. So Kanatu is a materials company and we've invented a new carbon-based material that we are applying uh, to benefit the automotive industry with uh, 3D uh, touch sensors and uh, heating elements. So with our technology, virtually any surface can be made smart and functional. Um, and in this concept, we are enabling intuitive user experiences um, with 3D touch surfaces integrated into the steering wheel wings. Uh, so one of the leading ideas behind the Oracle steering wheel concept was to bring the intuitive uh, smart device user experience to driving. In Finland, we have a lot of expertise in uh, designing intuitive and ergonomic user uh, interfaces. Uh, for the consumer electronics and typically these um, devices are used on, uh, used with thumbs uh, but the car industry has done this differently. There's typically a separate center display uh, to control the functions so the driver has to take his hands off the wheel and eyes off the road uh, to adjust the climate controls, uh, make a call or um, use the navigation system. And this is, of course, causing a lot of distractions that can have devastating consequences, as it only takes a moment for an accident to happen. So we wanted to help the automotive industry to minimize distracted driving by adapting the strengths of the um, smart device uh, interaction patterns uh, to driver controls. Then we also wanted to um, offer driver a bit of clarity. Uh, with our steering wheel concept. Our, our lives have become so um, cluttered uh, with information, so we wanted to avoid um, overstimulation by reducing the functions and controls to the bare necessities. So the Origo uh, steering wheel concept is a perfect combination of inspired design, novel 3D touch technology and leading its uh, software. Uh, with the new 3D touch steering wheel, driver can manage all key functions with their thumbs without letting go of the steering wheel. So it improves safety by minimizing distracted driving. Um, instead of touching on screen with the index finger, uh, the driver can keep hands on the wheel and eyes on the road uh, while controlling the functions. And the key controls are placed on the steering wheel wings and easily accessible within thumb reads. 
driver can perform many tasks with a simple tap, scroll or slide. For instance, um, zoom in or out of the navigation map by sliding both thumbs horizontally at the same time on top of the touchpad or um, adjust um, volume by scrolling thumb at the edge of the left uh, scroll that touch area. Um, Oracle features this um, iPod-like uh, scroll wheel uh, that is uh, 3D form, so it's very intuitive to use even without looking. So all in all, these um, thumb-based thumb -based touch controls are uh, very familiar for billions of people that are using uh, smart devices da daily with their thumbs. Um, so these uh, 3D touch surfaces enable design freedom and intuitive user experiences. Uh, the CMP-based um, touch sensors are extremely stretchable and flexible, which means they conform to any three-dimensional shape. Uh, you can replace multiple mechanical controls from different cockpit locations uh, with the uh, 3D touch surfaces, enabling um, sleek and unobtrusive interiors. And thanks to the um, expressive forms, um, they can be operated so instinctively that uh, the driver don't even have to look at them. And finally, um, I am extremely happy to share that our jointly developed concept has been awarded with um, a winner prize in the German uh, Design Awards uh, Excellent Product Design Human Machine Interface category. Uh, and we are all, of course, very um, proud of this recognition as it's a concrete proof um, of the level of innovation as well as the capabilities of our technologies. So with that, um, I would like to end with a brief animation uh, that will give you a sneak peek on what the concept is all about. Thank you, Mari. Let me, let me um, activate the sharing. Wonderful. Thank you, Mari. That was very exciting and very cool. And congratulations on the, on the win. Next one, I am going to promote um, Mr. Hasse Sinivara as a presenter. So you can start uh, talking about the user interface. There we are. Can, can we see your video? There you are. Go ahead. Oh, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? For some reason, I can't unmute you. <laughs> okay. Now. Uh, okay. Should be ready to go. So, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Hostess Nivara. Um, I'm representing TactoTech. Um, part of the MIVI Origo steer, steering wheel 
consortium member and um, mainly, let's say, I'll, I'll just try to put it in a presentation mode. Yeah, that's good. So, Thanks. Um, I work as a senior technologist in design innovations, so which practically means I'm spending 99% of my working time with uh, OEM styling studios, uh, UX people, color material, finish people as well, third party um, styling studios uh, around the globe. So uh, what Tactotech is doing, we, we develop a injection molded structural electronics technology, uh, which enables a, uh, so we integrate technically a printed electronics with a semiconductor or chip based electronics uh, into a injection molded structural uh, parts, uh, which means it's uh, ultra thin, natively 3D, uh, 3D form, uh, what we call as a smart surface. Um, integrating touch gesture, connectivity and illumination. So it's technically a, a single piece HMI uh, solution for various industries, various use cases, um, <clears throat> uh, and, and so forth so on. And within within um, the Origo steering wheel, I've been working basically for kind of a from UX to UI logic definition, uh, as well the illumination architecture based on the technology combination we've used uh, with, with uh, Canada to uh, CNB films, uh, together with our IMC technology uh, to basically create uh, a very unique uh, solution, um, something uh, that cannot be really reproduced with any, let's say, competing technologies, uh, conventional technologies in this form factor. So um, in total, as you can see, the the exploded view layout, but actually the functional element is is at about four millimeters thickness only. And, and within that, we basically carry the touch technology by, by the CN, CNB film, as well the illumination uh, with, within the IMSC part. So, so it is a ultra thin natively 3D part um, and, and carries all the functions. So um, like I said, we, we tried to create a, a something that is not reproducible with any other competing technologies within this particular form factor and, and the feature set. And if we go back to the really the, uh, the philosophy of, of the, the UX and the UI, uh, it goes way back to, let's say 50% uh, from my background of being a motorcyclist. Uh, I lived in Silicon Valley and Southern California for six and a half years, uh, ways back observing the traffic uh, as you do with the motorcycle you do observe a little bit differently so it's pretty remarkable what people actually do uh, within the car while they drive uh, whether it's with their phones whether it's with their touch screens or or any other let's say um, user interfaces um, within a vehicle so very enlightening experience um, which we kind of carried into this project so, so um, another kind of a, uh, like Mari said already, that we, we try to create something that is substantially reducing the, the interaction time within any media screens within the vehicle. So uh, tangling with uh, touch screens and, and so forth. So uh, another kind of a, in, in that context, how to come up with the solution was really to look at that what is the most natural. And, and I, I came back to the, uh, the PlayStation like UX. So you have a remote controller and then you have the visual feedback. So technically you don't really look at the remote controller, but you, you follow the visual feedbacks. And, and that's kind of the essence of, of the design that, that we created a HMI, physical HMI uh, system such that you don't really have to gaze in uh, or look into it, but you can, you can operate it with, with fairly intuitively without any visual following of what you do, but you get the, the visual feedbacks from the displays and, and better yet if you have the head up display. Um, so, so that's kind of a reducing the absolute interaction with any other screens in the, in the vehicle. 
And then uh, about the HMI system itself, uh, like I said, it's it's a PlayStation analogy, so you you, you are remote controlling most any function um, within the touch touch zone areas, uh, and it combines the iPod um, scroll wheel um, user interface as well the smartphone uh, gestures by tapping and and swiping. Uh, functions. So, so it is something that is very intuitive. Uh, it is something that people have accustomed to. A um, few very kind of a unique and, and new features. Um, those left and right zones are actually user configurable. So you can you can flip the side. So in in definition, the left side here is basically your adjustment side. So you adjust volume, temperature, fan speed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, on on the scroll wheel. While the other side, on the right side, is basically your menu menu browser. So we can actually change those sides by by just going to the settings and selecting the profile one or two, and you can switch the sides. So you can, uh, based on your handedness, based on your, let's say, driving preferences, or if it's a if it's basically a UK based car or European or American based car, um, you can configure the zones to be uh, swappable between each others. Another unique is something that you can actually define your own gestures if you like. Um, so it, it is a departure from a traditional OEM defined uh, user interface where you have, you know, volume is on the left side and something on the right side and, and there's actually absolutely nothing you can do. But here you can actually define um, your own gestures so, so you can adapt um, the user interface into your own preferences and you know if there's a uh, multiple users for the car um, it's always adaptable for, for, for the user itself um, another kind of a unique uh, first ever as we know uh, is the full navigation and maps control directly on the steering wheel so so those multi touch zones we can we can control the navigation. We can type in the characters. Uh, you can operate the maps, zoom in, zoom out, um, and or uh, do the map orientation. So uh, up until we know, uh, there's no implementation or even even the concepts existing in this level within the steering wheel system. And the lastly, um, we actually implemented few of the capacitive ACL safety features. So. It's a discussion uh, what I've been going through with uh, multiple UX people within, uh, let's say, uh, within automotive domain, virtually with any any OEM, is the question of can we actually do safety-related functions with capacitive technology? And here we kind of introduced um, a logic that that is based on the swiping uh, elements in in the touch zones. Uh, we have the grip detection or hands-on wheel detection in combination as well the, the user interface, the GUI logic. So um, it is designed to be a, a discussion opener within the OEM uh, segment that, okay, um, can we actually do um, capacity-based ACL functions uh, within a car, whether they are in the steering wheel or elsewhere in the car, but nonetheless, functions uh, cruise control, uh, start, start and stop function, and the turn signals are basically the ACL functions we've integrated here within the capacity domain. And lastly, um, the illumination architecture is something, uh, as, as you can see, we have a transparent windows. Uh, I call them as a glow rings. So, so technically, uh, we, we created this for the purpose that yeah, it looks cool on a, on a let's say a demonstrator, technology demonstrator. But um, on a, on a second level, we could consolidate basically informative uh, warning and and styling lights into those uh, rings as such. So so technically, you have multiple different warning lights uh, within a vehicle today, whether they in a, in an IP cluster or let's say a, a dead spot or or blind spot monitor uh, warning signal in in the mirrors outside so so you can actually bring them into the steering wheel which is technically always within your very kind of a, almost like a focus wheel so um that's the reason why why we also created this illumination architecture for 
for trying out that can you consolidate um, the, the, the lighting features um, in the steering wheel. So that's in a, in a nutshell about the, the UX, UI, the HMI uh, logic behind the OR ecosystem. Thank you, Hasa. That was incredibly fascinating. Uh, we have a few questions coming in, but I'll take all the questions at the end of the, the last presentation. Um, okay, from UI to UX, I'm going to make Timo Posio now uh, presenter, so you can start sharing your... Okay, we can see the presentation. Can we get your face as well? You don't mind turning on your video so we can we can see there you are all good go ahead oops uh nope audio can you try okay. now yeah, you... yeah okay so um hello everyone i'm i'm timo posio from Sealy auto uh, as a business development manager and coming from uh Sealy autos Oulu office uh, from finland so First, uh, briefly, uh, briefly about uh, Sealy Auto. So we are a professional services company uh, focusing on the HMI, uh, HMI innovation and HMI development. So uh, on the HMI innovation side, uh, we are working uh, with OEMs and tier ones, with uh, especially with the design departments. What comes to uh, rapid prototyping, helping the design teams uh, teams there, and uh, for example, we have been working lately with Pininfarina, and also this uh, Orico steering wheel is is one example of the innovation part. And then we are also uh, working uh, with uh, production cars, with uh, tier ones and OEMs, and there's uh, starts to be close to three million uh, vehicles on the road where we have contributed to the. Uh, developing on the digital aids and mice and just a brief uh, overview so we, we are in Sealy Auto we are operating from Finland then we have uh, R&D centers in Poland also uh, we have uh, operations in US in Detroit as well uh, and, and have been working with uh, with the major uh, OEMs tier ones since 2013. Then uh, going to the Orico user interface. So uh, our contribution to the Orico steering wheel uh, uh, has been the actual uh, digital user interface design and implementation of the, the UI software. Uh, first, going to the uh, user interface design. So there, were, uh, there has been two uh, uh, basic principles, and this is actually going going from the logic that Hasse presented to the actual details. So the, the first principle was, was how to reflect the physical design of the steering wheel to the, to the user interface. And there's one example like this uh, wings, how we call them, how they, those are reflected as these uh, black panels in, in the user interface. So the, that brings uh, seamless user experience and seamless uh, uh, feeling how those uh, that uh, digital user interface works together with the uh, steering wheel the other uh, other main main uh, thing in the ux design was that how the visual appearance of the user interface matches the ux logic what Hasse was uh, telling about and there are, there are two examples uh, shown here. So the one is the uh, like adjusting the volume. So there we have this circular uh, component which uh, directly follows when you uh, when you adjust the volume with your left thumb. In in this case, so directly follows your thumb movement. And the the other example is then uh, the uh, on 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 the Right side here is this playlist, so these uh, menu lists and, and uh, this playlist, what is shown here, those are shaped in the, in the curved form also uh, resembling this uh, 
circular movement that you can uh, do with your with your thumb and adjusting the controls there. So those th those have been the main uh, uh, principles when doing the actual design of the of the user interface there. Uh, and then when going to the uh, implementation, how the software has been built. So basically, this is already now uh, automotive grade implementation. So uh, they have, there are already this uh, standard cluster elements included in the design and implementation telltales, uh, and, and also these ASIL elements, what Asse mentioned. Then the software um, is built on the widely used CANSI platform that has been used on, on by many OEMs. Uh, there. So we have been using the, the CANSI uh, UI framework, CANSI Connect as a middleware layer, and then also CANSI Maps as uh, showing the map map uh, information there. And, and finally, the, the actual hardware where the software running is, is uh, automotive grade IMX8 hardware uh, environment there. So that's the, uh, that's uh, sort of uh, creating an excellent basis for, for uh, actually utilizing directly some of the uh, components and implementation what has been done with the Orico steering wheel. Okay, that was my part. Thank you, Timo. So that was the, the last one of the three businesses uh, that were part of um, creating the steering wheel. And uh, I want to mention as well, you spoke about the Kanzi platform. So that's provided by Rightware, another Finnish company that was on Maris, Maris slides. So that concludes the, the businesses. Then we're going to have uh, Dr. Farouk still wrap up with the um, industry university collaboration okay i got you are unmuted and we can see your screen and your video is there Okay, you should be. We we can't see your um, presentation. So is everything okay? Can you see my presentation now? We can see it, but it's on a split screen. If you don't mind going to your settings and adjusting it to so we can just see the one full. Okay. Presentation. Now it's good. Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. So like Petra mentioned, hello. Um, I'm Ahmed, um, I'm a researcher at Tampere University and part of the MIVI project. I'll be discussing the industry-university collaboration with the Origo steering wheel concept. So Finnish industry and university collaboration provides the opportunity to evaluate and fast track novel research ideas to develop functioning prototypes. The MIVI Origo concept is a prime example of this collaboration. Using streamlined techniques, we've been able to create novel systems to further research and development in multimodal in-vehicle infotainment and interaction environments. Some of this research includes breakthrough ideas in user interaction and system design, as we've already discussed, including this new concept called embedded haptic waveguides, which transforms the surface of interaction into an actuator itself. Unlike traditional collaborations where uh, usually swayed towards either basic research or marketing a specific industry asset, the MIVI Consortium values a well-rounded approach towards novelty in design and the practicality of execution. We've been able to achieve this through a sound development framework. The collaboration framework for the Origo concept utilizes various methods to get the maximum results. Using ideation and concept development, through collaborative design and prototyping within a targeted working group, the joint team has been able to fast track multiple generations of the Origo design concept. Remote testing and versioning has helped the team to overcome current issues with respect to the global pandemic, while system integration testing and user experience testing will help us evaluate the system more efficiently 
and provide a concrete output to this collaboration. As mentioned earlier, the collaboration also has yielded further interaction with our academic partners from around the world. Specifically, we've had various research visits with our long-term friends in the US and Canada during this project. Additionally, our research output is actively being presented and published in various venues to help develop and promote the new research in multimodal in-car interaction for level two and level three autonomous vehicles. Here's a short 30 second excerpt from our user interface software and technology 2020 conference submission, discussing the novel concept of the 3D printed embedded haptic mediation I mentioned. After this video, we are happy to, we'll happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farooq. So I'm gonna share the video from my end. So Thank you. bear with me. We propose a novel method of solid haptic mediation. We achieve this by constructing multiple embedded haptic waveguides within the surface of interaction, which can effectively mediate a specific range of applied signals. Here the solid material acts as the waveguide, while the empty space provides an insulation around the waveguide, reducing the unwanted propagation of the signal. This technique reduces unnecessary energy dissipation and guides the applied signal to the point of contact. All right, um, thank you. So what, what I'm gonna do now, let me turn my video, is I will pull up all the presenters and I will be uh, pulling up some of the questions. We have a number of questions from the audiences. So it looks like, okay, if you can turn on your videos yourselves, that would be helpful so I don't need to click that. Apparently, I have to send a request. Excellent, everyone is here. All right, we got um, questions pouring in. The first one, I think this came, Mari, during your presentation. And the question is, what about false activation on the steering wheel controls? Can you unmute yourself? I can unmute you. Again, Un unmute again. I can help. <laughs> yeah, please answer. I don't know what's going on with Maris. Mike. Okay. Well, in let's say in a, in a zero state, uh, the steering wheel is basically in your um, standard menu. So the other one. Let's say uh, the left side is basically your menu adjuster, and and the right side is your uh, no no sorry, left side is your uh, volume adjuster. That's basically the zero state. So um, the the right side is the menu adjuster. So let's say if you if you by mistake you you tap something or you, you basically touch something, you you technically you travel only within the menu, or you you tap the menu or you tap the volume. Uh, but technically, you don't adjust or you don't activate any function in the vehicle in, in per se. Do you want to uh, add it? Mari, you, you, oh, sorry. So if you if you basically let's say um, by accidentally you hit the hit the cruise button, uh, yes, it activates the cruise, but you cannot adjust without a, a certain safety logic behind of it so so technically you cannot adjust any any cruise functions um and then if you if you tap the home basically that takes the the vehicle to the home home zero state so volume adjuster and the and the, and the zero menu state so uh, there's a no, whole lot nothing you can actually do incorrectly in in that ui in that sense to to activate the vehicle logic Anything to add, Mari? No, not from my side. I think it's, it was well explained by Hasse already. Okay, good, cool. And thank you all for very detailed presentations. 
I want to get one of those there and we'll see immediately. Okay, next question is, um, is it planned to run an HMI study with Origo steering wheel versus established steering wheel switch and UI designs? Who's going to take this one? <clears throat> Maybe I can answer. So uh, it's the plan to uh, study these uh, company-driven prototypes in our uh, academic research. And uh, that's actually uh, when Ahmed is collaborating with the companies in the near future, we are planning some studies based on this. Yeah, I, if I may add, um, we have a couple, couple of vehicle OEMs that actually are interested to integrate the steering wheel into their, um, uh, let's say, a prototype vehicle, uh, which would then mean that we would actually be driving with the steering wheel and, and we would be bypassing some of the functions on, on the vehicle um, canvas itself. So, so we could actually test, for example, the cruise controls uh turn signals and other other ASIL functions so so there is a possibility that at the later phase um there is a a real car ux testing as well yeah i have a follow-up question on that so this is a concept design and it was created together with the university but who legally who owns the concept so what if somebody wants to license the whole thing or parts of it how would that work who would they talk to Uh, we haven't really applied any patents for the Oregon steering wheel, but everyone has their own like IPR and so forth. So um, they will just uh, talk to um, individual companies and depending on the technologies and so forth. So. Okay. Yeah. And uh, maybe I can continue a little bit about the starting point of uh, this project. So we plan that there would be this kind of uh, offerings from multiple companies integrated as mm -hmm. a, a higher level of product and this is one example of that kind of results that the companies can sell together these concepts it's kind of like a showcase of different uh, different technologies that's that's great and then also to let everyone know so if anyone uh, wants to contact all of these companies you can go through me etra.soderling at businessfinland.fi uh, I think a follow-up question is, will there be an Origo 2.0 concept, for example, with haptics included? <clears throat> um, I can say first that it's a future work, not disclosed, but uh, the companies can decide how much. Any of the companies want to share your secrets? Well, well uh, technically, uh, yeah, if I may, um, it's as I said, um, given the haptics technologies today existing, um, none of them really apply with the design like as, as such here. Um, those wings and, and the start and stop module, they are actually a so-called solid part, so they, they don't float in the design. So if we would take any, let's say, commercial haptics technology, we would need to change a little bit the design to be a, a floating or moving at some point, uh, which which you could actuate, which takes it back to uh, Ahmed's work. So so that specifically is, is designed to, let's say, uh, work with the solid base. So we don't need to create any suspended or, or um, floating elements in or structures in into the uh, stack itself. So um, at, at best case, the Ahmed's um, system is able to basically provide a, a haptic feedback through a, a solid installation. So uh, remains to be seen how how that uh, how that and, and when that is in a in a in a state that we can we can showcase it. Yeah. So if I may may add, so not taking directly uh, comment to what comes to haptics, but what we have already. Uh, uh, have a, have a, quite a quality, got quite a lot of ideas how we can actually utilize these interactive controls to further make some innovations what comes to the digital user interface and uh, how to use that. So we have a backlog, but let's let's see <laughs> what is coming out. There's always a backlog. Uh, Ahmed, do you want to add something? Just uh, briefly, Hasse has already explained it quite eloquently. Um, the only thing is that, like Hasse mentioned, uh, it's um, um, Moving uh, haptics in active feedback is a limitation in most of these environments, like in Carvey. 
And what we need to, or what we are working on, or we're trying to do is to bypass these limitations in which if something moves in an environment that's already moving, does it really provide you haptic feedback? So we're kind of trying to go over all of those limitations, but um, yeah, that's work in progress. And we'll see how that can be shared. Is that also, Hase, you mentioned that this is this was the, um, the unique uh, point was, uh, this is not reproducible in this form factor. Was that a driver in the design? So maybe there's another form factor if you want to add other features such as haptics. Yeah, in 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 that context, the 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 thickness of the part is is what's kind of a considered to be very unique uh, given the features. So we are in a the the part the wings itself they are four millimeters uh, thin uh, and, and total thickness and and within that structure we have all the touch elements um, we have the illumination um, as a system level. Uh, technically, let's say um, the touch elements are actually on the front side of the, the part. Uh, there is still a possibility to add actually more touch controls into the back side of the part. So we call it as a B B film side. So so you can do this in a in a really like a PlayStation style of in, implementation that you have a front and back side activations, uh, which are not interfering each other. So so they can be can be made possible. Um, as such, but really the unique is the thinness of the part uh, with illumination features and, and particularly also the the transparent window. Um, so so if I look at any other competing technologies or so traditional technologies today, you are probably in about 10 to 15 millimeters thick part with with that uh, feature set. So so that makes a a huge difference uh, in that sense. And in particular, if you add uh, haptic tech technology that further further increases the, the thickness of the part. So you are soon to be in a, in a 40 millimeters uh, wing part in, in that sense. So uh, it is unique uh, in, in a global domain. All right, we're uh, actually 55 minutes into the webinar. So let me try to wrap up real quickly. Uh, one final question. Will a cost comparison be done for the concept versus mechanical steering wheel switches? Technically doable. Uh, we are in discussions with, with some of the steering wheel suppliers. So, so we can do kind of a head to head comparison. Um, of course, we have to go then back to the uh, to the feature set, so we cannot take a very, let's say, um, uh, a base level Toyota Corolla uh, steering wheel, but we have to go pretty much in the high end uh, to do the comparison, but it's technically possible to do. And plan to be so that we actually have a, a full cost breakdown or actually total cost of those, for example, wing parts and, and the start and stop, so you, you get the functional part cost structure as well. So, so it is planned to be basically consolidated at some point of time uh, during the fall time. So, so uh, if kind of requested, we, we can make it available under NDA, of course, uh, but really the comparison to any other steering wheel is something we need to work with the, uh, either with the OEMs or, or the uh, TO1 suppliers uh, like ZF or Autolib or Joyson Technologies to basically grasp the baseline what the what the let's say a comparable steering wheel would would be a, in a in a cost comparison level Does anyone yeah, else maybe, add? yeah maybe i can add here a, a comparison just for cost uh, effective analysis would uh, would need to be also done in such a way that it balances the usability and the durability of our design all three aspects need to be considered uh, like Hase mentioned that it can't be just with a, a very low-end vehicle like a Toyota Corolla or a Honda Civic. So it has to be uh, catered to the usability and its durability. And you see that most of the manufacturers are, are limited by what they can achieve by placing buttons on a steering wheel. And everybody wants to think outside the box. And we think that our proposal is, is a useful term or starting point. Excellent. Uh um, I don't have any more unique questions, so some overlapping questions. Uh, 
For further questions, please email me, first name dot last name, that's Petra, P E T R A dot S O D E R L I N G at businessfinland.fi. So either questions to the companies on their technologies or their products, and they have a lot more than we presented today, or questions on the research part and how to collaborate with Tampere University. So I can uh, collect all the, the connections and, and then facilitate the conversation further. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, speakers. You were wonderful. Uh, congratulations on the Design Award win. That is fantastic news. Um, thank you, attendees. Uh, I still want to advertise this is a series of smart mobility webinars. So please go to the businessfinland.fi page where you found these webinars and sign up to the future ones. We have one coming up on software updates for autonomous vehicles, for example. That should be interesting. Uh, with this, Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day and good evening wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.